I have been married for almost 11 years now and by no means have all the answers. I am by no means a perfect wife. We do not have a perfect marriage, but marriage has honestly been one of the greatest gifts of my entire life. And if I can pass on any sort of help, of encouragement to fellow mamas, then I absolutely want to do that. We will be talking all things about marriage. I will not be going into like super great detail in our personal lives, that kind of thing, but we will be covering topics that surround a lot of areas of marriage. So if you have little ears around you, just keep that in mind. Might want to pop in the headphones for this one. I am coming at all of this from a loving husband, a great marriage. So if you are in an abusive relationship, a lot of what I'm about to say will look different for you. I will be going through these 10 things and then I actually asked you guys for questions on Instagram as well and got a lot of those. A lot of them were really deep. So we'll get to those after the 10 secrets to a happy marriage. Number one is to show affection even in public. I always notice when there's cute little old couples <laughs> that are holding hands, he's opening the door for her, all these quote unquote old fashioned maybe gestures but so sweet and so dear and just shows you the depth of their relationship. I think in movies and stuff, a lot of the time they portray love, even sexual intimacy as being this wonderful, great thing until the couple gets married and then it's like it all falls apart. They start fighting, the fire dies away in their marriage and showing affection even in public, I think can even be a witness to those around us of what a godly, marriage can look like and that it truly only gets better as the years go by and have a huge impact both on yourself and to those around you. Number two, be interested in his work and things that are important to him. I think when you get married, you realize just how selfish you are. <laughs> and then of course, when you have kids that's taken a step further, we're naturally want to serve ourselves and think highly of ourselves and be all consumed with what's important to us. And just like it means a lot to us as women, when our husbands are really interested in our lives and our doings, what's important to us, listening to us, it's also important that we show interest in what they interested in. I know for Josh it means a lot to him when even though I don't understand all the ins and outs like of his furniture business or of the farm, all the things, if I show interest in it and just listen, like experiences he's had throughout the day, things he's excited about work related and that just honestly means so much to him. With this would be to know his love language and portray that on the regular. Fulfill those needs and desires and ways that show him love. Number three, don't compare whether this is your husband to somebody else's husband or whether it's just between you and your husband who's done more work, who stayed up late, who got up with the kids at night, who took out the trash last, like all the things. I think if you're so focused on out serving the other person and thinking of ways that you can bless them, for one, they'll naturally want to bless you in return and treat you well in return. That's just how it works. Think of this even with my kids. Like if one of my kids comes up just nagging like, mom, when can I have a snack? I'm so hungry. I worked all this time and on and on and on. They just nag and nag versus if they come up, mom, may I have a snack? You know, it's a really simple illustration, but the difference in how one naturally wants to respond to things and if your cups are filled you will in return want to fill other people's cups so do that for your husband just be focused on filling his cup versus being so focused on who's done more work and all the things I do think people need to be more selfless it does not mean the same thing as being trampled on or taken advantage of number four never stop learning your husband for whatever reason we tend to be so focused in on when we're dating or engaged what are boyfriend or fiance, what does he like? What's his favorite food? What does he like to drive? What's his favorite hobbies? What are ways that fill up his cup? All the different things. And then when we get married, we sometimes get a little distracted from that. And something that I have learned over the years, and I definitely have had my ups and downs, like seasons where I just 
honestly forget. And then seasons where I'm really mindful of this, but just keep studying him. And it can go obviously as shallow or as deep as you choose to go. Number five, always be there for him sexually. A huge thing that we can do as Christian wives is to always be there sexually for our husband. I've mentioned this before briefly, but when Josh and I just got married, I promised him I would never turn him down sexually, having no idea how much that actually would mean to him. And he has mentioned numerous times after that how much it actually meant to him. And I think that when our husbands know that we are always there for them sexually, that is a really special thing that only we can give them. So it's something that's been important to me to always be excited for that, even initiating, surprising him sometimes. I'm just realizing that this ties in completely with some of the questions that I have here. I got a number of questions on how to not let intimacy grow stale and still desire your husband after years of marriage or how do you be more fun or flirty? And number one is be adventurous. With the time and the place and all the things really helps to keep that part of your marriage very exciting. Obviously, guys are super visually driven and so a really fun thing can be to surprise them with some new lingerie and stuff like that occasionally. And I actually have something I wanna show you with this. I recently found out about a small shop that actually sells lingerie, it comes packaged in this adorable little box. So I reached out to her and asked if she would want to send me one to show you guys in this video because I just really love what this shop stands behind. They have no models on their Instagram page or website so that your husband can actually go and pick something out for you or you can browse through it together and you don't have to worry about, you know, obviously immodesty. And also she is really big on women not comparing their bodies to all these models. So I really love what this shop stands behind. It is so beautifully packaged and obviously the pieces are stunning. This one is actually from the Spring Bridal Collection that just launched. It is so beautiful. I love all the lace detail and really, really well made. So surprise your husband once in a while with something like that. We'll have Ginger and Peach website linked down below if you want to check them out. But that can be a really fun option for spicing it up in the bedroom a little bit. And another way is a website that I actually heard about from someone else a couple years ago. It's called christiansexpositions.com. It is what you think it is. It literally has, I believe, thousands of positions. It's all just stick figures. So they do have like illustrations, whatever, but it's all stick figures. So it's really fun to browse through with your husband. They even have printable cards that you can print and you, you know, you can make a whole game of it. Anyhow, those are two resources that can really help spice up that area of marriage. Number six, always speak highly of your husband to others. It can kind of be like, okay, well, what's the point? But it really can tear down your husband's self-esteem if you are gossiping about him to your friends. There is a difference between a trusted mentor and maybe discussing your concerns that way, but that's entirely different than blabbing about it in front of his friends, your friends, and things of that nature. Number seven, be his biggest cheerleader. When you live with someone full-time, <laughs> you realize we're all sinners. Like, none of us is perfect. We all fall short. When we support him and cheer him on it will in return make him want to treat you really well and be the husband of your dreams number nine is actually another thing that I've thought about a lot I know that especially as young mamas it can be really hard for us we may have all the desire to be all the things for our husband and have energy when he comes home from work and have a beautiful meal prepared and, and all the things but we just can't reach around and it can feel overwhelming and kind of difficult feeding. So one thing that I did years ago and I would encourage any other young mamas to do or just if you're in a busy season of life, ask your husband, what's the one thing that means the most to him when he comes home from work at the end of the day? Is it if you're all dressed up and look fresh and have maybe, you know, put on a little extra lip gloss or put on clean clothes after your day's work or if it's like a solid good meal or if it's if the house is tidy. And it's interesting because I've had a couple friends also do this for their husbands and the men seem to know right away 
which of the three they would pick. So knowing what means the most to my husband, I can still try to have all the things, but I know throughout the day, especially as we get into the afternoon, okay, I really wanna focus on this one thing that I know will mean the most. That can be just encouraging in busy seasons of life. Number nine is to respect him, and it kind of goes maybe with some of the others. A lot of us are probably familiar with the book Love and Respect. If you're not, I highly recommend reading it, but it talks a lot about how a woman's needs are more the love and the nurture, and a husband's needs are more they desire to be respected in fact I heard someone say if you want to write your husband a love note don't end it with I love you end it with I respect you and it sounds odd <laughs> maybe as a woman but a husband just longs and, and men in general long to be respected they want to be your protector and leader and all that and when they feel respected it can do so much for their own confidence and how they view themselves maybe so that's really a gift you can give to him number 11 kind of goes with that compliment him frequently words are powerful the Bible says they're sharp as a two-edged sword and with that we can so easily develop and we'll get into the questions here. We had some questions about like how do you resolve conflict or what are your arguments and things like that. We'll get into that, but complimenting him frequently is a way that we can give life. Okay, I feel like this might be kind of a long video. Where are we at? 20 minutes, I think, so far. I will try to be pretty quick, but a lot of these are in depth, so I don't know if I should be making this a two part, but I think we'll just dive in and uh, I hope that I can be of help by answering at least some of these to the best of my knowledge. I am not a counselor and some of the questions I got honestly were counselor questions. Some of the DMs you sent on Instagram, some hard things that people are walking through. So like I said, I'm answering these questions but from my experience and what I have learned from others and namely from the Bible. But we'll start off with a more lighthearted or shallow question. Did you have a full-time job right after getting married? I did not actually. For one, I had Lyme disease right after our wedding had had it years previous found out about it then but also moving from Canada to the US I did not yet have my green card so I could not legally work right after we got married and I think back on that now and it makes me laugh because I remember just like being bored <laughs> at home, which now seems so foreign. But we had a small house and very little yard we were renting. I literally had like a one foot long flower garden in the front, that's all, no garden. I remember thinking like you can only clean your house so much, like what am I gonna do? But after a few months I was able to get my work visa and I did work at a coffee shop for a while as well as a ministry thrift store. Y'all seem so happy but have so much going on. How do you take time for each other? Little moments throughout the day. Some things that help is we eat all three meals together. Well, Josh and I both do intermittent fasting now so we don't technically eat breakfast but we still sit at the table with the kids. We eat lunch and dinner together. The farm lifestyle I think has some advantages in that way. I don't so much now that the, that we have a number of kids but I would used to like ride in the tractor with him sometimes if he's doing field work or we would milk together and call it a barn date, things like that. We also have been really good about weekly date nights. I think we just both realize how important communication is in marriage and we'll often stay up probably way too late sharing our hearts with each other and that can look obviously different in different stages of your life and marriage. Have you ever had to deal with unfaithfulness in marriage and if so how did you learn to trust again? I have not and I realize that's a huge gift like whether it's pornography or having an affair or all the things it's such a prevalent problem in our culture and and I know counseling has a really bad rap. Just the word makes people run, but honestly, I would speak very highly of it and think it can be so helpful. I guess just encourage you in this area. Don't be afraid to seek help if you're walking through something like that. Scared about not knowing my husband slash family in heaven. What do you think? I'm guessing the question is what I think on whether or not we will know them in heaven and I believe we will. There's a book called Heaven, I actually haven't read all the way through, I've started it, Heaven by Randy Alcorn that 
you should read. <laughs> At least as far as I've read, I can speak highly of it. But it speaks a lot on kind of this whole subject you might find encouraging. The Bible does say we won't be married in heaven and that can make me really sad sometimes coming from a really happy earthly marriage. But I guess I just find comfort in knowing like we won't be wishing for anything in heaven. We will not lack anything in heaven. How did you know each other was the one and what were some signs that you liked each other? <laughs> this one made me laugh because for Josh it was like love at first sight. Well maybe that's strong. He noticed me right away and I asked him about this question and he said well the biggest thing was just he noticed me right away, he liked me, he went home, we didn't see each other for months, and he just couldn't forget about me. So his big thing was he couldn't forget about me. And then for me, <laughs> Bless his heart, uh, when he called, I was actually gonna say no. I did not have any feelings for him, but prayed about it, prayed about it, and honestly didn't have peace about saying no. Granted, I, it's not that I had concerns about who he was, it's just that I felt like I didn't know him well enough to be dating him. Like, I felt like he was basically a stranger and was just scared it wouldn't work out if I said yes. How do you and Josh navigate disagreements? This is a huge one in marriage and a big make or break in a relationship and the health of that relationship, but biggest thing again is communicate. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said communicate, 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 but it is so key in a happy marriage. We always try to talk it out just to give each other the silent treatment or even if it's something that really bugs you about your husband that he might not even be aware of, just keeping it quiet is not solving anybody's problems. I have big feelings. I can be kind of a dramatic person sometimes and I love my husband. I do not want to tear him down, but I know sometimes in those big heated moments when you have these disagreements or if something's been building inside of me and I just need to let it out, I can say some hurtful things. So I try really hard to, when I'm feeling such big feelings, to preface what I'm about to say with the words, this is how I feel. Please don't take it too personally, but this is how I feel right now and then say like, I feel unheard or unloved or like I'm carrying the whole load or whatever. But just being kind enough to preface it with that, realizing what I'm feeling are real feelings, but they might be blown a little out of proportion. And honestly, in a day or two, I might've forgotten about how I was feeling, but they feel so strong right then. That can just really help your husband in understanding and also in actually listening to you without already thinking, through what his comeback could be to your big rant. And then never go to bed angry. Always resolve problems before you go to bed. It doesn't mean that you've agreed. You can just go to bed agreeing to disagree, but that there's not a wall between you. What does it mean, and this could be a controversial one, what does it mean in practice that a man leads his wife? I know there was also a question on, in my opinion, what is submission? For whatever reason, we hate the word submission in our day and age. So my view on that is Ephesians 5:22. It actually goes all the way to 33, but it's the passage on wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. And it goes on. I talked this through with Josh and I thought it was really interesting what he said. There's three times the amount of space in this passage taken to speak to the husbands on being selfless with their wives, on loving them as Christ loved the church, on all these things. And the wife's role in that is to submit to her husband. So in other words, the husband is doing the heavy lifting in this passage. He has all these requirements that he is to uphold and how he is supposed to be to his wife. And honestly, when the husband is that way, that selfless, loving him, his wife more than his own flesh, all these things, and it even says, how Christ loved the church and he died for the church. And the wife's job in that is to, in turn, submit to that authority, submit to her husband, 
Be that supportive wife. Respect her husband. I think often we see that passage and think, oh, women are just getting trampled on. But that's not what it's saying. The, the husband has this responsibility and then the wife comes under that. There's also a number of questions regarding how to connect with your spouse, especially during the little years. It's really hard to plan fancy date nights and you can't have petals on your bed and new laundry every night and stuff like that, but it just really boils down to the little things from my experience. It can be the winks across the table or the flirty little slap on his rear as he walks by or putting your arm around him as he's showing you something on his phone or kissing in the kitchen or showering together. So, so many ways of doing this, but I would narrow it down to the little things and finding times to communicate. How have you worked through child training differences? So we were actually raised very similarly. If a child comes to us with an issue, we may treat it slightly differently, but it's been really helpful for me to know that even if Josh doesn't handle something exactly like I would, he loves our children just as much as I do and we're in this together and we both really just want what's best for our kids. Thoughts on boundaries within a marriage relationships. I think certain boundaries are really important, but I think it can also be over-boundaried like any other area of your life. It shouldn't be legalistic. It should be done out of your love for each other. But I do think certain boundaries are important. For example, Josh and I will never have one-on-one -on -one time with the opposite gender, whether that's texting them, whether that's going out to eat with them, even if it was getting counseling from them, anything like that will never be one-on-one -on -one with just me and a different man or just Josh and a different lady. Sometimes I've wanted to surprise Josh with a birthday gift and I need to get information of what he wants from one of his friends, then I will text that friend and that friend's wife. But it's never just one-on-one -on -one, and it's just a safeguard we've put around our marriage. Boundaries will look different for different marriages, but I think certain boundaries are really important. Advice for newly married wives. <laughs> Well, my favorite one to give my friends when they were all getting married was, may all your ups and downs be in between the sheets. <laughs> but I guess it would be a few things. Never stop learning your husband, as I talked about before, and strive to outserve him, out love him, out respect him, all the things, and pray for him daily. Yeah, we'll say that's my top three. <laughs> I, I don't know what my top three are. There are so many, but marriage is truly wonderful. It is such a gift and I think it is so undermined in our day and age. I'm not saying there aren't hard times. There's absolutely ups and downs, but if you're both willing to work on it together, forgive each other, ask forgiveness of each other, it can truly be the biggest gift in your life and only gets better and better as the years go by. So anyway, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everything came across the way it was supposed to. I know sometimes I look back on these videos and I'm like, I don't think I said that right. I hope we didn't have too many of those today. If you have questions about something I said, don't be afraid to ask me. Don't forget to check out Ginger and Peach if you're looking for some cute lingerie. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye friends. Golden, golden thing.